me just check. Oh, other way. I'm pushing the little guy up higher in the field of view so we can see it, along with M35. There we go. And then all I need to do is fix my histogram and drop this. Um, my dark set is killing us here. There we go. Much better. So this is open cluster M35. And then because it's almost on the galactic plane, uh, we can see looking at this cluster, we're looking out also at the next spiral arm out. And uh, this is in Gemini, so we're looking away from the galactic core and out into the Perseus arm. And here's this cluster. I've forgotten its name. It's 2158, further away and older. And, uh, and going through a lot of dust, so older and dust makes for redder, and it's a much redder, redder looking cluster. Yeah, that's a pretty sight. Okay, well, let's see what we can do with uh, M1. And that's nearby, too. Let's see if I can find Taurus. The beehive is a crab. Crab Nebula, right in here. There's the crab. And slow to target. M35 is 2,800 light years, and 2158 is 16,500. That's fantastic, Doug. I'm writing these numbers down. M35 is 2800 and 2158, 65. Wow. That's an impressive view when you look at that. Gets kind of a three dimensional appreciation for the Milky Way that that structure is in. Okay, so let's go here. Uh, this is the Crab Nebula. Here it is. Now, what we're going to do, we're going to lengthen the exposure. We're going for a long exposure time. Uh, I'm going to stop. Change the exposure to 20. And if 20 works, maybe 30 will work better. A loop on 20. Background is still a nice dark gray color. You can already see some reddish in the crab nebula. It got bright because I really lengthened the exposure on it. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is uh, we're going to stack the original and two. That'll get darker now. Okay, so stacking in the original and two is going to make it smoother, and we hope we can see the crab elements better. M1. M1. Crab. No, I'm not average stacking. I decided to do additive stacking. I wanted more information. 
Now I can see red squares. Do you see them? There will be red fil filaments appearing, which are uh, hydrogen signatures, hydrogen alpha. Ooh, there it went. That's too much, isn't it? Well, we blew it out. And darken it down a bit. Maybe that'll help. Well, no, it didn't. So I need to average fewer, huh? If I'm going to stick with that kind of uh, exposure time. There's the basic picture again. So Bernie, we're going to try doing one plus one. And then what I'll do is average, like you suggested. Now this is going to brighten when it adds them together. So I'm just going to leave the histogram where it is. The input is at one. Driver update. No, I don't want to buy driver update. Okay. Okay, the second picture is in and it updated. And then if I bring in the white set, I'm going to. So we now are dealing with a 100 point spread on the histogram. Rather high contrast. And because I changed that histogram, the computer's there, the oil too much. All right, well, let's try uh, averaging. Let's do it. And then I'll work the histogram on the average picture. You're right, Bernie. How many you want to average? Doesn't matter. We could do uh, the original in three. Before. Mm. While we're waiting for the computer, I'm going to save a couple pictures up here. Come on, come on. There it goes. You know, often when you do a save command, it kicks that computer into high gear. I don't know what it is. So I can bomb away these three pictures I had saved. And, oh, more than three, I guess. Well, now I have to reload the camera. All right. And trigger mode and loop. And when we get the picture up, I'll start the averaging. Also, are you back? Now, if it's uh, if we're not good seeing, I should be able to magnify this. We might be able to see the pulsar. I have to import my dark frame again, 40 degree dark frame, the one that has the 50% gain, there it is. Okay, okay, open and activate. So when that renews, that should take out some of the hot pixels. Yep. Not completely. Not completely. And, and then average stacking and aligning. Now I've got to go back and make sure I have my processor activated. Uh, what am I doing wrong here? Now Cam Sky. 
right click, put two nine. <clears throat> there it goes. A nice smooth looking uh, crab. And so let's play with this a bit. Okay, I really uh, am cramping this style. We have a 75 point spread on the histogram right now. Let's see what happens. Okay, Skylock. I got a, I've got a turn in too. It's getting on. 247. Even the Hubble. Well, the pulsar is right here. That's uh, two stars very close together. Let me zoom in on it. Uh, we have an, enough uh, foreseeing tonight that I'm not resolving those two stars. But of the two stars, the pulsar is the one closest, this one, the one closest to the dark finger up here. What is it, a uh, 40 millisecond pulsar? Yeah, and you can see the, uh, the whitish color of the synchrotron illumination and then the the red is the filaments of the uh, hydrogen filaments of the crab. And wow, there was a lot of rotation. Did you guys see that? What's going on? Look at all that rotation. That's still rotation from an alpha azimuth telescope uh, looking at an object very close to the zenith point. It's a wonder it can do any aligning at all. Okay, well, let's move to something different. And then I'm going to call it quits. You get the you guys get the call every 33, 33 millisecond. <clears throat> what would you like to go to? Uh, I think I want to see the Pleiades. Andromeda and Taurus, we were just there. Pleiades, Pleiades, here they are. Okay. Quite a lighthouse, you bet. Thirty-three milliseconds, and pulsars are about the size of the Earth. I bet you, you know you can do the calculation. It, it must be almost relativistic speeds approaching fractions of the speed of light. Oh, damn! Uh, putting my parking belt on. I. 
always uh, late on the draw, and the car starts beeping at me. Well, we got these taken care of. And now we've got some deities. Now, I'm going to go short exposure for a minute and center it the way we want it. Let's see. So I would... Uh, up here and stop things and it's on 20 seconds I think we can take it down to 10 mm. Thirty point. you got to be kidding this link will show you the center star <clears throat> okay, let's see if I can pull this up a bit. Now, of course, I can't tell which direction it went. I have to wait another refresh. <clears throat> went down. Okay, so I have to push the image up. And pull it over. Well, what happened now? It's not. Not in there. We go. You need to push it. Let's do a longer exposure, see where our nebulae are. Okay, so I will loop it and fix the histogram. There we are. There are a couple of beautiful nebulae. Now let's see if we can bring them out better. Um, It's so pretty. I think maybe I will just go to stop this and go to the theme. And we can average. You're welcome. All right, now let's bring the uh, histogram in. All right, and now let's uh, average this. Averaging is engaged. Now, these are beautiful reflection nebulae. So we've got these incredibly uh, blue stars. Somebody might look them up, but I think they are uh, B-class stars. So very hot. Very hot. 10,000 degrees Kelvin or so, as I remember, for a B-class star. Okay, so it's now rolling along, averaging. Okay, I'm satisfied with that, so let's see if we can brighten that nebula up a little bit more. And darken that background. It's really quite amazing.
Mary Payne Nebula is between us and M45. You've got to be kidding me. Oh, look, it can't be between us. This is the therapy over here, right? Maybe I have them wrong. Um, what's this one here? Therapy and hmm, I'm punch drunk now. Kind of losing it. Lots of light to reflect. No gas in the Seven Sisters. The, the, well, the light doesn't reflect off gas. It reflects off dust. So that dust must be in the background, behind the stars. No? It's between us? Well, you learn something every day. Blue light scatters terrifically. So it's sort of like having an atmosphere with the sun scattering on the atmosphere and making the sky blue. And that's what we're seeing here. Maya. That's it, Jack. Maya. Thank you. The Maya Nebula. It's a pretty, uh, pretty nice view of the nebulae tonight. You can see all the very faint striations in them. The Meripi Nebula is quite beautiful there. And Maya, right here, chat, Maya. I'll sign at the top left. Up here. I'll sign in. I should write the names down. Yeah, there they are. Hey, Lance. Yeah, it's a pretty sight. But you can see it even better uh, electronically than you can with the eye. Although you can definitely see these nebulae by eye. Yeah, I've got to sign off now, too. It's getting late, and time for me to hit the hay as well. Yeah, thanks for uh, recording. You're welcome. Yeah, it was a fun night, just hopping around. Sometime soon, I'm going to try and get my um, diffraction rating out and do some more uh, spectra on the stars with my new uh, DS-16M camera. Well, that's good. Getting on a Monday gives him, uh, he'll, hopefully he'll fix that in short order. Doug, you're welcome. Yeah, it was fun. Good luck with you and your imaging. Bernie, Ed.